this is a ship going to start a new world. It's a ship um, that has something like 2,000 colonists on it that are going to start life anew on a new planet, uh, Orgai 6. And they're on their way there when they hit this storm. And the storm does some serious damage to the ship. And Walter is concerned that uh, the colonists might get damaged. So he awakes the commanding crew. And so the commanding crew is waking out of cryosleep, awoken out of cryosleep. And soon after they, they've woken up, they hear a beacon. They hear a, a, what seems to be a distress call or signal, which happens to be Shaw's distress signal, from a planet which seems to uh, fulfill all the necessary requirements for them to start a life, i.e. air that's breathable and fresh water, uh, foliage and, um, and sustainability, a sustainable planet essentially. So they decide rather than going back into cryosleep, which will take them another six years I think to arrive at their destination, they decide to take a look at this planet and they shouldn't have done that. The David models, I think it was the, the David 8 model was designed to allow the synthetic to develop human-like qualities and characteristics and uh, <clears throat> so we very much see that in David. He has uh, characteristics like pride and vanity which are very human traits that were, and that ended up disturbing people they weren't very comfortable with it, so they decided to design the following models with fewer of, of those programming um, functions. So basically Walter is just very much a functioning synthetic that operates through logic and without any human emotional thread. Uh, so he doesn't incorporate concepts like vanity or jealousy or um, gratitude. He doesn't fall in love with characters like we saw a strange relationship between Sean and, uh, and David and Prometheus. There is a, uh, a bond that de develops there which is a very human one and with it, you know, human flaws that, that come with it. But um, Walter is purely there to look after the crew and the ship, the Covenant. He's like a super butler. There's no one like Ridley, I mean, that I, certainly that I've come across or that I've you know, read about or heard other people in the industry talk about. He's just um, very special. I mean, he comes from an art background so he's very aware of a frame. He's very specific and um, very knowledgeable about what should be in the frame, i.e. working with both the costume department and the looks and the, and the outfits that we're wearing to the art department. And I've seen him sort of uh, talk with both departments in great detail and in a language that, that is familiar to them. Uh, which he does exactly the same with the acting department and the camera department. Uh, every department, he's seen everything and I think, you know, through making so many commercials himself, also with his company, uh, his passion for talent in the industry and his acknowledgement of talent again in all departments. Ridley will always pick, pick actors that might be in the fringes of popularity, let's say, you know, films that are more um, art house uh, and, and always, again, great diversity in his cast, uh, different ethnicities that he, he uses, and also just the way that he notices, um, you know, somebody in the prop department. Uh, and how valuable they are and how good they are at his job, at their job. He's, um, 
he's just a, a, an all-rounder, and that would be selling him short because he's just a, he's a master. I think is the best way to put it. He's a master filmmaker, and there's not many out there. I think it's um, it's a very rare breed. The concept of space and what's out there uh, that it would be very hard to believe that we're the only species that exists in the universe. Um, so there's that to begin with. And then I think the idea of parasites, things that would use us as a host, I think that's uh, quite a, a disturbing concept. And, uh, you know, for me personally, I always remember from the first Alien film, John Hurt and the and the neomorph bursting out of, out of his stomach, and that's always sort of stayed with me, and I suppose it's that idea of something growing inside of us. Hey, Vali here. Well, if you are like me and love movies, stick around as I have some awesome movie trivia for you. For its American release, the first 20 minutes of train spotting had to be redubbed to make the Scottish accents more intelligible. Whilst filming The Hunger Games, Jennifer Lawrence accidentally kicked co-star Josh Hutcherson in the head, knocking him out cold and giving him a concussion. Jennifer. Benedict Cumberbatch recorded his screen test for Star Trek Into Darkness at his best friend's kitchen using an iPhone. Hmm. Bill Murray was originally considered for the role of Han Solo in Star Wars. Independence Day was shot in just 72 days. The scene in the breakfast club in which all the characters sit in a circle on the floor of the library and tell stories about why they were in detention was not scripted. Director Hughes told them all to ad-lib. So, how many pieces of movie trivia did you know? Let me know in the comments below. Keep up to date with all the latest releases by subscribing to our channel and checking the notification bell. See you next time!